Hi, good morning, fans of the framework. Um, sorry, I'm a few minutes late. As usual, there were technical difficulties at the McLeod household. Nothing new. Um, so welcome to live on Facebook. And what we're talking about today is what I should have named power to your people, power to your people. And so we're just going to spend 10 minutes. All right. I promise you only 10 minutes this morning talking about how to engage your employees to behave, perform, contribute at that higher level. But most specifically the problem of why we as leaders don't feel like we can already ask already busy people to do one more thing that we can't engage people to volunteer for what's considered as extra work but actually it's can, should be considered the work of the organization the work to make the organization a better place to a work for patients to receive care and for your community to want to come to and thrive in with everybody else that's there and thriving in a great work environment. So how do you do that? Um, so 10 minutes and then I'd like to field some questions. If you have any questions, please do feel free to type them in I'm using the iPad today. So the font's a little bit bigger. And let's start off right away with why leaders feel as though they just can't get their employees to do this extra work. And what we have seen is that leaders don't have a way to formally organize that. They don't have a framework for their employees to work in. Think about this. You've already maybe developed a framework for your leaders. We see that very rarely, but you hear us talk about it all the time in our partner organizations at the Capstone Leadership Summit that the reason why we have a framework and our logo is a framework is that we put solutions in place, how we lead around here, how we care around here, how we develop strategy around here. This is what we want to be the, the norm is within this framework. So you develop this great framework for your employees to come to work each day, to punch in and out, to take a patient assignment, to do a certain number of x-rays or, or surgeries throughout the day, but we really don't have a great way of dispersing the other duties as assigned, the extra work at, as if you will. Because what happens is, is that when it comes to strategy, when it comes to goal attainment, when it comes to developing a power to the people, an employee driven, but leader led organization, the structure, if you will, it's not the job of leaders. It's the job of everyone. Let's just consider uh, patient satisfaction results. You can't do that by yourself. You can't carry the satisfaction of patients. You're not at the bedside. You're not taking x-rays. You're not um, checking in on, on those things. Uh, you may do it every single day, but not 24 seven, right? But what, you, what we really need is a way to engage people that no matter where you are, what you're doing, what you know, your day consists of, that those people are going at it and getting work done and coming to you and saying, you know what, I figured this out, I saw a problem, I solved it, I just wanna let you know about it. That would be fabulous. So how do we do this? How do we move beyond good, okay, fine, right? How, how do we move beyond those four letter words that we all hate to a great work environment where the work is getting done and things are just moving along and you don't have to even ask people to volunteer. They're coming to you and they're saying, I want to be a part of something bigger, right? So we've got a few solutions for you, okay? The first one is, you know, how do you make your, your employees just live for this? Well, the number one solution, you know, to making people feel uh, appreciated and heard, but also to involve them in the extra work is rounding. Those one-on-one -on -one meetings where you're relationship building. People want to know what their purpose is. People want to know, how can I do more? We hear leaders say all the time, no, Jane, no, Sue, you're wrong. People, my people don't want to do more. They have absolutely no interest. They want to come to work and punch in and punch out. Not true. 
that's that's not what a being human is all about and it's certainly not what what working is is the the common workplace is all about so here's the deal when you round ask people explain explain to them hey this is what we got going on uh, there's a new team forming it's a process improvement team it's an a3 team it's an employee-led team that's going to improve our patient experience or it's going to be the voice little nod to southwest health in platteville wisconsin that improves the employee experience i think you would be amazing on this team would you consider joining it this is when they meet these are the, the rest of the people that are on it so those words of a leader especially during rounding are so darn powerful right i know you'd be great at this I trust you to do this, right? I have utter faith in you that you would rock this project. Your voice is so important on it, right? So the first thing is rounding. The sec second thing, and, and this is a solution that we put in place in our partner organizations, is very subjective mid-year performance conversations. So during those mid-year performance conversations, you know, you're going to be, you know, the, the positive ones, the coaching and the, and the compliment, so you're going to be explaining what what's going on what's the strategy of the organization what is the department's strategy and vision and goals what's your vision for where that department is going and then you're going to teach your employees this is where you fit in that big picture it's a huge picture and you have a role in it and this is what what i see now, my experience as a leader, right? 37 years as a registered nurse, um, over 25 of those spent in a leadership position, and this is what I found. Every time I would set an employee down to say, you know what, you're, you're a dang rock star. Um, you know, this is where the organization is going. This is how our department fits in it. This is your specific role. At the end of that conversation, 99% of the time, my high-performing individual said, what can I do to help? Boss, what can I take off your plate? You've just laid out this strategy for me, told me where I fit in it. Uh, I think I could do more. I want to be a part of this, right? Everybody wants to be a part of something bigger. We, you know, we only have to, to you know, infuse our faith and hope in people. Uh, the third thing, and I refer to this as the Karen Stockton role. Karen is a transformational advisor that works for us, hails from Chandler Regional Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. Go Sun Devils! And Karen says how she gets people to volunteer is, you know those people that come to you on a daily basis and they're like, what? You know, they're, they're wanting to give you the monkey off their back. They're venting. They're, they're so frustrated with a care issue. They're so frustrated with, you know, maybe a process that's just not moving fast enough for them. Well, guess what? What Karen does is she turns it right around. She hands it back to them. And she says, hey, guys, this, you know, you know, I can see that you feel so strongly about that. Talk to me. You know, if you feel strongly about that, I've got a team that I'm putting together. Maybe you would, you know, wouldn't mind joining that team. It's going to last 12 weeks. We're going to meet, you know, we're going to meet like bi-weekly for 12 weeks. And at the end of it, we're going to have this solution and you're going to be a part of it. Join me, right? So they're obviously passionate about it. Call that passion out, okay? The next solution is, you know, one of those words that leaders all of us could improve upon delegation by not delegating to people you're holding them back by taking this work and putting it all on your shoulders and not asking people to do more you're holding them back from really achieving their key purpose their key purpose is not to save lives and stamp out disease and and you know be the best materials management technician be the best at delivering supplies maybe in the first one or two years, right? But that's not really what they're coming to work for. That's not really what they're striving for. That's not their purpose. So this has been great fun, all right? You know, my call to action for you is, remember, this is that what this journey, this transformation of your organization and your department is not the work of leaders. It's the work of everyone. And don't hold, uh, don't hold people back. Does your organization have a formal structure for this? 
Do you have a framework of your own? We can help you put one in place. Go to our website, sign up for a free consultation. Uh, we'll do 30 minutes with you, talking to you about your organization and uh, a framework that we can help you put in place to get these, to power up your people. Our website is www.capstoneleadership.net, www.capstoneleadership.net. I hope you have an amazing new year. I hope that uh, all your dreams come true. And I hope that you inspire five people in the next week to power up, come to you with stuff they know needs to be done and volunteer to do it. Have a great day.